If you've been lounging like a sloth and your mind is feeling dusty, it's time to brush it off with your good friend Rusty. It's Rusty's Playtime, we're gonna learn and have some fun. Hi, I'm Liz Crooks, director of the Pentecrest Museums, and this, of course, is Baby Rusty. We're here to welcome you to Rusty's Playtime. We've just entered month two of our museum galleries being closed. We miss you, we miss all the learning and all the fun that happens in our spaces. So we've decided to bring you that learning and fun from our homes. In order to make that happen, we're going to visit some other museum staffers today and see what fun they have in store for us. Our first staffer to visit is my daughter, May. You'll remember May, she's a docent at both the Museum of Natural History and the Old Capitol Museum. She's here to give us an update on the Nature Journal Challenge. Take it away, May. Hi everyone, I'm May, and during the last Rusty's Playtime, I talked about the Museum of Natural History's project, the Nature Journal Challenge. The challenge is all over now, but we still have all 30 days of journal entry ideas up on our Facebook page. We loved how all of you interacted with it, especially the Sweet family. Dash and Theo are six-year-old twin brothers who have really enjoyed working in their nature journals. Their mom, Jennifer, has been posting photos of their entries for us, and we've loved them. Here's what she told us. It gives them a chance to spend time outside where they like to write and draw about nature. They did most of their entries in our backyard where they'll soon start planting seedlings that they're growing inside. Since the coronavirus has started, aside from nature journaling, they have spent time practicing roller hockey, FaceTiming with family and friends, and creating comic books. As a mom and a museum educator and art historian, I've also really enjoyed the project, keeping a nature journal of my own so I can join in on the fun. Thanks for sharing, Jennifer, Dash, and Theo. Great work. That's, That's all from the Kirk's house for now. You're off to see Cindy next. Bye. Hey friends, my name is Cindy. I've been having so much fun watching birds at the bird feeders outside my window that this week I thought I would share with you how you can make your very own bird feeders at home. You don't need a lot of fancy stuff and some of the things you might already have in your cupboards. If not, I understand that it's kind of difficult sometimes to get supplies these days, but at least you can know how to do this stuff for later. Let's take a look at some of the things that I'll use. To make our very own bird feeders, we need something to use as a base. Here I have some pine cones, some old bread that I use cookie cutters to cut out shapes with, ice cream cone, or if you don't have those things you can just take some cardboard and draw a picture or trace a cookie cutter. You can also use a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll and if you don't have any of those you can take a flat piece of cardboard and make a roll using a stapler. Next we will spread some peanut butter onto the base and then on that peanut butter we'll stick things like bird seed or if you don't have bird seed you can use unsweetened cereals like uh, Cheerios or uncooked oats, raisins or dried cranberries or uh, other cereals like uh, these, these wheat squares that I've crushed up. Then we'll need some string or twisties to uh, make hanging devices for our bird feeders. Let's take a look at how this goes together. So here, I'll show you how you can make your own cardboard roll. You take a piece of cardboard, I roll it together, and then I use a stapler to fasten the pieces at each end. And now I have my own roll. 
You can also use, like I said, a paper towel roll or a toilet paper tube. Or look at this. This is an ice cream cone. Just carefully snip off the end and then cover it with bird food and the birds will love it. Here are those shapes that I made out of dried bread. I used a pen to poke a hole in them. That's where I will put the string to hang them. And then we have pine cones, or like I said, just cut out shapes of, from cardboard. So here we go. Let's see, I think I'll do a pine cone first. I'm gonna take my peanut butter. Now, if you are allergic to peanuts, you can use other nut butters or you can get suet or lard from the grocery store. Birds can eat those things too. So your peanut butter or suet or lard or unflavored gelatin, you can spread it onto whatever base you're using. Right now I'm using a pine cone. Spread it around, coat all of the sides. And here comes the fun part. If you need help with spreading, get an adult to help you, okay? Then I'm gonna take my bowl of bird seed and I'm gonna lay the pine cone in it and use a spoon to put some up on the top, turn it around and coat all the sides and then lightly tap those into the peanut butter so they stick. And there we go. All we have to do is put some string on it and hang it in a tree. Let's make one now out of this dried bread. I'll start with my peanut butter. And remember, if you're allergic to peanuts, you can use other things, other nut butters or suet or lard from the grocery store or unflavored gelatin. So I'm going to coat my, my bread shape with the base. And this time I'm going to put the Cheerios on it. Toasted O's, I think is another name for them. There we go. So now we press some of them in, the ones that are look like they're going to fall off. If we want, we can add other things like these dried cranberries. Birds love to eat those. And there we go. We'll set that one aside to dry. So as you can see, you can make bird feeders with simple materials that you might be able to find around the house. And then we'll go and hang them outside. That's where the birds are. There's one of our bird feeders. I tacked this one to a tree with a thumbtack. I'm sure the birds are going to find it. This week my favorite was the white-breasted nuthatch. They're the only bird that can run straight down a tree. They have such strong back toes that they're able to walk straight downward. I think that's really cool. Well, I hope that you have some fun making your own bird feeders and watching the birds. Bye. Those homemade bird feeders looked awesome, Cindy. I'll definitely have to make one of those on my own sometime. My name's Jillian. I've been a docent at the museums for quite some time, and now I'm the newest addition to our team of education assistants. I'm lucky enough that my family has bird feeders just like these all over our yard, so we get birds visiting us all the time. We fill our bird feeders with sunflower seeds, safflower seeds, and thistle. And the birds we get visiting most often are cardinals, morning doves, and finches. Of course, birds love eating these seeds, but did you know they also eat bugs, grubs, insects, and even spiders? That's why it's always a great idea to leave the first mow of the season till later on if you have a yard and to avoid spraying chemicals. Remember, if you have a good habitat for bugs, it's more likely that birds will come visit you. 
Well, now that we've learned all about what birds eat, it's time to learn all about where they live. So let's head to Jess's. Bye. Hi guys, it's Jess here. Cindy, I cannot wait to make that. Thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, I'm sitting outside in my backyard right now beneath the lilac bush that has just bloomed. I'm very excited about that. And you may remember from the last Rusty's Playtime, my cat Jaggy, uh, I've brought him out with me today. He doesn't usually get much time outside because cats are actually terrible for our neighborhood bird populations. Uh, so I'm keeping a close eye on him. Uh, today I'm gonna read another story. I had fun doing that last time. Thank you for watching. Um, this one is called You Nest Here With Me. I just love this book. It's, uh, it's a newer book, but it's totally a bedtime classic in my home. Um, I highly recommend this book. My son wants me to read it all the time. It's by Jane Yolen and Heidi Stemple, illustrated by Melissa Sweet. Um, there's some collage and watercolor and um, pencil line drawings in, in it, and I, I just think the artwork is lovely, and it rhymes, and it sort of talks about um, bird nesting patterns, and or habits, rather, and it's just really cute. Um, it's good for younger audiences, I think. So I'm gonna share it with you today. Um, again, it's called You Nest Here With Me. My little nestling, time for bed. Climb inside, you sleepy head. Like baby bird, your nest can be anywhere. There's you and me. Pigeons nest on concrete ledges. Catbirds nest in greening hedges. Tiny wrens in shoreline sedges but you nest here with me. Grackles nest in high fir trees. I like these little squirrels here too. Terns all nest in colonies upon high cliffs above rough seas, but you nest here with me. Some owls nest in oak tree bowls, some down in abandoned holes. Hawks may nest on telephone poles, but you nest here with me. Here's some other creatures, some bunnies and deer out there. Coots nest low in cattail reeds. Sparrows' nests are full of weeds, plus tangled grasses, feathers, and seeds. But you nest here with me. Look at this little frog family. Very cute. Swallows nest above barn doors. Plovers nest on sandy shores. Eagles nest upon high tours, but you nest here with me. Cowbird, the uninvited guest, leaves her egg in a foster nest. Ah, look, here's the cardinals, their nest, and the cowbird laid her egg in there and took off. It reminds me of that bird from Horton Hears a Who. Lazy old bird. But you nest here with me. Killdeer, once their eggs are laid, perform a broken wing charade. Have you seen that before? They act like their wing is broken to lead uh, someone away from their nest to keep their babies safe. The clutch can rest there unafraid, as you nest here with me. Birds nest in trees, in sand, on stone, in colonies, or all alone. They nest in holes and under eaves, in barns, in reeds, on poles, in leaves, and safe inside the nestlings grow while learning all they need to know. So till you're big as big can be, you'll nest right here in our house with me. Here's a little hummingbird nest with baby hummingbirds. 
I just love that book. I think it's so sweet. It rhymes and uh, it's really educational and it'll totally put a little one to bed if that's what you're trying to do. I, we're not trying to put you to bed right now, but I think it's a great book. You should check it out. Uh, it's fun to read again and again. I'm pretty sure we have all the birds named in that book at the Museum of Natural History. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the story time. We're gonna go see what our education team is up to this week. See you later, bye. Hi everyone. So the experiment that we're going to be doing today is a beak adaptation experiment. So an adaptation in the context of the experiment that we're going to be doing means that a bird's beak will change depending on the environment or the place that they live in. The beak adaptation tells us what birds eat. Birds can eat fish, small animals, seeds, nuts, fruits, insects, and plants. There are also different kinds of beaks. These include cracker, which you can see in cardinals, shredder, which you can see in owls, chisel, which you can see in woodpeckers, probe in hummingbirds, strainer in ducks, spear in herons, tweezer in warblers, and Swiss army knife in crows. All right, so before we get started, uh, I'm going to show you the materials that I have for the experiment. So I have a coffee filter, uh, filled with a bunch of different stuff. Um, I have some gummy worms, marshmallows, uh, little pieces of cereal, pistachios, and then some Q-tips in there as well. Um, and then I have a mason jar or a cup that you can use um, to be our bird's stomach. I have a little glass of water, a spoon, some tweezers, a paper clip that I kind of extended out, a straw, and that is it. All right, so here comes the fun part. So now we're going to be using our different beaks. We're gonna pretend these are beaks. Um, and then we are going to be trying to take food out of here and put it in here. So go ahead and test these out. Some of them will work better for others. Some of them um, will have multiple uses. So we're gonna try that out. Doing pretty good so far. And you can do this at your own pace or with different items around the house. You don't have to have the things that I have in here. So we got a few things already. Now we're gonna try this. Got some Q-tips. Almost had two there. Try pistachio. And then this one, I normally think of um, like a pelican. So they kind of scoop stuff up out of the water um, and then they eat it. So got a big spoonful there. And if you are thirsty, go ahead and take your straw and drink out of the glass of water that you have. Uh, this will be pretty much the same exact thing as a hummingbird where they are sucking out nectar out of a flower and that is how they eat. Um, so you can go ahead and try these different foods out um, and see what you can get into your stomach. Let's go visit another museum staffer. Welcome back to another craft time. My name is Emily and I've got another fun craft for you this time. Since we're talking a lot about birds at this time, we're going to make some bird watching binoculars. These are super easy to make and they're really fun to use when you're watching birds. So we're just going to need a few things. We're going to need some toilet paper rolls. Now if you can't find two of them, you can make one by rolling up a piece of paper. 
You'll also need a pair of scissors. Make sure to ask an adult if you need help. You'll need tape or glue. I found some tape, so that's what I'm going to use. And then the last thing you'll need is paper and maybe a pencil or some markers or crayons or whatever you want to use to decorate your bird watching binoculars. All right, let's get to it. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to measure out a rectangle. Now I'm gonna use my toilet paper roll and a pencil to see how wide it needs to be. You want it to be about the same length as your toilet paper roll. I'm gonna make a few marks so that it goes all the way across the page. And then we're gonna cut straight across, just like that. All right, there is our rectangle. It's not perfect, but it's gonna do great. We'll set that aside while we get our other pieces ready. Next, let's cut out his beak. So his beak is kind of like a diamond shape. You can make yours pointy or rounded like mine. So we'll draw this diamond shape. And now let's cut it out. All right, and then the next step for the beak is we're gonna fold it in half. See, it opens and closes now. All right, let's get his wings cut out. So for his wings, you wanna have one flat side so that you can tape it down. So we'll start it right here and then we'll go out and make it nice and fluffy. And then we'll make one just like it or as close as you can. All right, there's all our parts. We have two wings, one big rectangle for the body, a beak, and then I went ahead and cut out, cut out some eyes off screen. All they are are white circles, and I used just a, something that was circular, like this tape, to make them even. All right, let's put it together. So first, I'm gonna take my pa toilet paper roll and the one that I made myself and tape them together so that they don't roll around. And now we're gonna roll this around the toilet paper tubes. And we'll tape that shut too. If you're using glue, you can, that's totally cool. You can glue them shut, glue them together. It will work just the same. All right, let's put him together. So we'll go ahead and stick his eyes on. Now to do this, I'm gonna roll up a piece of tape so that the tape is hidden. I'll stick it on one side of his beak and then I can stick it on and you can't even see it. Hello. And the last thing we're gonna put on is his wings. So you'll take the flat side, bend it over, see, just like that. And then you're gonna tape them or glue them right on the side right here. And that's all you need to do for your bird watching binoculars. Please send us a picture or a video of you using your bird binoculars. We'd love to see it. Bye everyone. <music>Hey everyone, it's Seth, Museum Docent Manager here. I was inspired by today's episode to do some bird watching in my own yard. You can bird watch even in big city areas because birds are everywhere. While I wait for a bird to arrive, try and guess which of my coworkers found these birds.
Oh, nice bird finds, museum staffers. Speaking of finding birds, guess who I just found? We've got a little bird perched right here on the side of this building. I believe it's a northern flicker, if my guidebook is correct. Well, that's it for us. From the entire museum staff, thank you for tuning in. We can't wait to see you back in the Hageback Hall of Birds soon. But until then, enjoy the birds in your neighborhood. Bye, everyone. It's Rusty's Playtime. We're gonna learn.